A father from Wisconsin and his five-year-old daughter were out on a fishing boat this summer at Green Island on Lake Michigan when they made an unusual discovery with their fish finder. It's a sonar imaging tool they use to locate fish. Anyway, it led them to a shipwreck that dates back to 1871. Wow. Tim Wallach joins us now to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. Are you able to tell on the fish finder like what you're looking at? Um, yes, you, you know, you, you kind of have to interpret it a little bit, um, but I could definitely tell that it was uh, some type of man-made structure. Hmm. I got to tell you, I mean, I, to the average person, when you're looking at that, I'd be like, oh, it's just some junk at the bottom of the water. Have you done enough of this looking at the bottom of, of bodies of water that, that you knew this was something different? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I definitely could tell that it um, was not a natural structure or just sand or rocks on the bottom. Um, and I had an inkling that it was some type of shipwreck. Um, however, I, I definitely didn't expect it was the magnitude that it ended up being. So, yeah, what is the backstory of this ship? And is there any gold in there that you're that is coming to you? <laughs> uh, that, that was my daughter's first question. <laughs> was, yeah, Smart girl. Treasure. <laughs> um, but so the backstory of this ship was um, it was uh, back hauling lumber um, from a town a little bit south of us um, on the Bay of Green Bay. And it was actually hauling that lumber during the Great Peshtigo Fire, um, which happened to be the same day as the Chicago Fire. Yeah. Um, and so nobody really mm -hmm. learned about that. And uh, the smoke was so thick. Uh, well, that ship was sailing that even though the lighthouse keeper on Green Island um, had kept the lighthouse lit for, I think it was five or seven days straight, um, that ship still ended up running aground on one of the shoals. And the lighthouse keeper was able to help save the uh, passengers on the ship. Um, but unfortunately, the ship wasn't savable, um, and so they it let it go to, to find its resting place, and the uh, passengers on the ship ended up being on the island for another five days until a boat was able to get out and get them. So, Tim, what's the procedure here? Who did you tell about this, and is there some type of finder's fee? What's the rule when you find something like this? <laughs> um, to be honest, I, when I saw this, I thought it was really cool. Um, I, I took some pictures, sent it to some friends, and left it alone for a little while until I posted it on a Facebook group for Forgotten Wisconsin Memories, uh, where Jordan from the Wisconsin Historical Society reached out to me. Um, I had posted that I thought it was a different shipwreck uh, that was known in the area. Um, and he let me know, hey, I don't think that's it. However, we do have another ship that we know went down in that area, uh, but we've never found it. And uh, so honestly, there's no process other than uh, dumb luck that someone from the Historical Society saw my post and was interested enough to do the research on it. Um, so Tim, is someone gonna dig it up? Do you get, do you get finder's fee, nothing like that? No, nothing like that. I, you know, I, I hope they're leaving it where it is, where people can uh, just go out and enjoy yeah. it. It's not in deep water. It's definitely, I think you can probably see it from the surface on the right wow. day as well. Pretty cool. Well, for more, you can check out the websites on your screen and the Facebook page, Forgotten Wisconsin. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Appreciate having me on today. I wonder if it was the guy at the Historical Society told him there was no money down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> back, nothing down there to see. Yeah, I'll get back to you. <laughs>